Hello, everybody. Welcome to James Looms Tonight. <laughs> Wait, James what? Looms Tonight. It's a brand new show. Uh, I'm your host, James Looms. And uh, what I like to do is I like to bring on special guests every single indeterminate amount of time and, uh, you know, interview them and talk to them about the things that they're doing and the things that's going on in their life. And I'm super excited because this week, my guest is none other than Elise Willems. Can you can you actually sl- like slide out and then slide back in again, okay. like you're all right. And then Elise Willems. Hey. Thank you. Thank you for coming. In. Hey, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to Thanks meet you. for coming the first on. First time we're meeting on the show. Willems tonight. Super have you big, big big fan of your work for a very long time. So I'm very happy to have you on the show. Um, Elise, I understand. You have recently made a foray into a new, uh, a new kind of uh, creative creative world. Is that correct? Yeah. Like. Uh... <laughs> hey, hey, everybody! Elise is here, um, and so we're playing. We're gonna be playing. Apropos, it's Costume Quest. We're gonna be playing Costume Quest. Well, you're Del- playing it. I'll be playing Costume Quest. It's a delightful uh, Halloween game. Uh, this is Costume Quest Two. Um, I loved the first one. Um, at least I play the first one. It's a perfect Halloween game because you basically get to trick or treat and play a very fun, witty, clever game. It's delightful. It's delightful and it's fantastic. Um, but it also felt like it was fitting for the season and also because of what I want to talk to you about. Which is what? I want to talk to you about your book, Elise. You wrote a book. I correct? did. I did. Can I see it? Yes. Can I see the book? It's here. Mm-hmm. So what we have here is. here is A Night in a Halloween House, written by Elise Willems, cover art by Adam McQuaig. He did a fantastic job. It's pretty great cover art, pretty super cool. Um, and Elise, I... I wrote, the, I wrote the back jacket, so I had to write the little paragraph where I talk about what the book is good for. It will, why don't you read? Why don't you read it for those of you who aren't familiar? Who, what, who is this book for? Well, What's going on? Give us a rundown so of this book. It is, you know, it is for ages eight to thirteen. I feel like, mm-hmm. but maybe if you're a little bit older and you have some Halloween nostalgia, you can appreciate it. I read it. I'm thirty six. <laughs> um, brimming with Halloween, with a nostalgia, is what mm-hmm. I uh, called it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's nothing special. It is. I brought. I, I didn't just bring you on the show to talk about nothing special, okay? I wouldn't have brought you on, Willems, tonight. We have prestigious guests like David Lederman, <laughs> okay? I just um like I always work on a few things, you know, mm-hmm. in my free time. When you have the free time. When I have the free time, and uh, this is something that I had been working on for. I mean, st- over five years ago Mm kind of started first kicking around the idea and then putting down thoughts and notes for it Mm -hmm. as I do and this is just kind of one of the ones that has I sort of have seen through Mm -hmm. um and you know it's the kind of thing where I would say that there have been stretches and stretches of months at a time where I don't I wasn't working on Mm -hmm. it because I was working on work stuff in my free time Mm -hmm. or just working on other things Mm -hmm. that I was kind of into at that moment but mm-hmm. this this especially in quarantine i thought i'm gonna just finish this i'm gonna put mm-hmm. it out and and it'll be done so you've been done. this idea has been bouncing around in your head in numerous forms well, for about five years yeah right? because we at the time we were living somewhere where there was a house mm-hmm. that sort of i would walk by with benson every mm-hmm. day and kind of got me thinking about this idea. It's a creepy when, house. It's not really that original idea of a big creepy house, but I would I would walk past this house with Benson, mm-hmm. um, and I would think, man, if I was a kid, I would be so scared of that house. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a house where you see nobody going in and out of it. It's so ramshackle and run down. And mm-hmm. and I thought, man, when I was a kid, this would be like the house on Halloween mm-hmm. that you know you you're scared of when you 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 never see anyone go into it, but then all of a sudden there's a light on. Uh huh. Yep. And you think. Um, you know, wow. And I and I thought, are kids these days still scared of that kind of stuff? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I think kids <laughs> are afraid of, like, uh, transmitted diseases and what have yeah. you. But, but no, I mean, it definitely harkens back. And the the book, again, I read the book. 
And it's... You had to. It's... You have... As long as I've known you, you've always talked about how much you enjoy Halloween. I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. It's your favorite holiday. But you also lament the fact that where you're from, you didn't really get uh, much of an opportunity to enjoy it the way you might want to because... Because I'm from Toronto and the weather is always a big factor. It's very cold. So you often talk about how you would wear... Hey, you'd have to wear a winter coat over your costume. Mm -hmm. And... I imagine by that time in the season, you know, movies always depict Halloween as the fall weather oh, yeah, and these cul de sacs and, and like these stuff. The like Halloween that. you had. <laughs> Mine was pretty close to that, yeah. Oh. Um, but like the co- Halloween of Costume Quest, very yes, much. Yes, so. absolutely. This is the Halloween that I, as a kid, would see in movies and mm-hmm. TV shows and think, wow, that's the Halloween. But, you know, maybe in Canada, it's maybe you get a Halloween where it snows mm-hmm. or it's raining or maybe yeah. it's just so cold and. But you, so you wrote a story about that kind of perfect Halloween. Yeah, about some kids that, that mm-hmm. just, and it's it's set in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. So it's just meant to have that kind of throwback feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. It feels kind of like goonies y. Did you read the bit. back? You want to read the back? I cover? can. I can. I think that'd be fun. Or you could read it. You probably. Do you want me to read it? Yeah. I can read it. I mean, it's yours, but yeah. here you go. I'll read this. I'll read this. All right. It's Halloween, the spookiest night of the year. Billy and his friends are trick-or-treating without parents for the first time ever. But things take a turn for the frightful when a series of escalating events force the kids inside Briarwood House, the rundown and ramshackle residence that locals claim to be haunted. I described the house. Can this ragtag group of misfits navigate bullies? The weird new girl at school and survive a night in Halloween house. That's a good summary because it has a title in it. <laughs> That's why I thought the title when I, when is I wrote what the it. story's about. Um, I self-published this, so yep. which self-publishing is like a whole situation, and I self-published it to Amazon, but I also wanted to retain publishing rights, so like I bought my own ISBNs and barcodes and like mm-hmm. did did the whole the whole thing. Um, so I wrote, you know, I wrote, obviously I wrote the description on the back, mm-hmm. and then I wrote this little blurb. Brimming with nostalgia, Night in Halloween House harkens back to Halloween's of youth, a time before cell phones and the internet when candy ruled supreme. Kids played outside until the street lamps came on, and campfire ghost stories were accepted as fact. Mm-hmm. I wrote that. I had to write my, my own hype man. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes sense. You know <laughs> that. I feel like you know the story well. Um, um, so most of this was done in, like, a Google Doc, right? Just yeah, kind of like I mean, tossing I ideas in, in a, and stuff. Yeah, because I mean, I, you know, mm-hmm. that's that's kind of I feel like how we do everything now is in that Google ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. Um, and with everything that's kind of like been going on over the last few weeks, I almost at a certain point I didn't even know if I was going to follow through and publish it. Mm-hmm. You were very encouraging to me that I should still do it, and well, I knew that you wanted to release it around Halloween time. I knew that you had been busting your butt every free moment. We don't get a ton of free moments, and every free moment that you had, you were sitting somewhere typing away at, even if it's like you were saying, like one sentence or a couple words or whatever, you were always trying to add stuff into it. And then we kind of got down towards the, towards the, you know, the final straightaway, the sprint towards the finish. And you were really, really hammering, hammering home. Cause like you were saying, there's a ton of formatting things. There's, you have to apply for what oh, you yeah, said, ISBN and stuff. It's a whole it. process and you were doing it all yourself. And so you're really, hammering down on it and I I wanted to see you meet your goal and I know you know we have friends you you've shared it with some friends and some of them were like oh well you know don't kill yourself you can wait till next year or whatever or whatever I I mean I think I think it's awesome that it's done it's I think it's super fun and again if people have already started picking it up and like getting it which is pretty awesome I mean I was so blown away but just for like the support of people that have bought it and people like Friends included, because I, I kind of just expected this to be a thing that I just put out there, mm-hmm. and I'm ha- I'm happy, and and it's something I did for myself. Well, I'm, um, I'm I'm also super. Not that it matters, but I'm super proud of you too, because like, you know, you ke- you keep a lot of things close to the chest, and I think you you also are the kind of person who doesn't necessarily want to say you're doing something before you've actually started doing it, which I'm, I think is I'm really, really bad about that. <laughs> I think it's a good thing. I honestly think it's a good attribute that you you. Because some people want that reward of having said they've done something without actually having done it yet. Um, but then I, on the flip side, I have people that message me, like friends that are like, you did, told, didn't tell me you were doing this at all. Yeah, I know. But I mean, you know, it's not like... But I'm always working on different 
things. I, I don't think that changes the value of it, and I don't think that diminishes anything that you've done. Oh, I got some costumes, candy corn costume. Oh. Um, and I think that, like, by you doing it, I think it's really cool. I didn't even know it. <laughs> I knew you were working. Like, well, I'm, I'm not all... stupid because we we're in the same <laughs> one bedroom apartment, right? So I know there's things that you're working on, but you always have like ideas and stuff. And it wasn't until earlier this year, something you've been working on for five years. It wasn't until Over earlier, five years, like this year, that that you were like, "There's a story I want to tell." Well, I get very um, like self conscious. Probably isn't the right word, but I just I just feel like. Sometimes when you and you're working on things, if you mm-hmm. put them out there so much, they kind of lose that feeling of um, importance where you should still be working on them. You talk about them too much and then mm-hmm. you start to oh, lose yeah. your focus on actually just just doing it and, and getting it done. And I mean, I have. Uh, trust me, I mean, I guess I guess it's also a follow through thing because I have other things that I work on that I'll probably never follow through on. I'll never finish. Yeah, but um, you finished, you wrote a book. And and again, you're a very modest person. Everyone everyone that knows Elise knows how modest she is in not just a Canadian way, but in a in a very human way. And so I know you're downplaying it and you're like, oh, well, it's just the book for kids. I mean, well, yeah. a lot of people haven't written just the book for kids. And I think it's a fun book there is a four star review on amazon already that does point out that maybe it is so creepy for some of those well more i more sensitive it, children i wanted it to feel like some of the the books i would have read when i was you know eight or nine where they are absolutely scary mm-hmm. but it's kind of how you get your your character mm-hmm. you build you build character by you know if you if you shelter yourself from every little scary thing no mm-hmm. kid's gonna have fun and they're not gonna grow up yeah. With any kind of damage, which kids should have tons of damage by the time, you know, they're our age. That's how I've always felt. I've always felt <laughs> that kids can handle basically anything and they'll either be scared or they'll love it. Yeah. And then but it doesn't matter because you didn't just target the kid. Like sure. you didn't dumb it down to them. And I don't feel like this book is a dumbing down of anything. I think I think it's a fun story that harkens back Thanks. to Goonies. And again, I'm I'm very proud of you for having done it. And I think it's super cool. And I, I mean, I had probably those nicer Halloweens than you did. I mean, I had some, I had fun Halloweens too. I, but I, I like, I love the trick or treating and I love figuring out what costume I'm going to wear. Even like when we went to, like when you go start going to college or you get older and it's like parties, part, I never like parties as much as I like the idea of walking up and down the street, you know? And doing stuff for Halloween. We do that with Benson. You yeah, know? I love walking Benson on Halloween and seeing like everybody out in their costumes. And it's just like, it's just such a fun experience and vibe and warm, cozy mm-hmm. feeling of nostalgia with it. Um, Remember when I dressed up as Proto Man <laughs> in a Proto Man costume that barely fit me? Na- and then I walked around our neighborhood <laughs> with Benson just because I like that kind of thing. And this is. This isn't what the entire book is about, but a lot of the setting of that book is that kind of feeling yeah. of really like wanting to do it. Um, physically holding something that you've done is a really cool feeling as well, because um, you know we do a lot of stuff where we're putting it out digitally, mm-hmm. but having like a physical. Well, we also have like five copies in our our own household because <laughs> as soon as so as soon as it went on sale, I bought the Kindle one. And then as soon as the physical paperback one, I bought the paperback one because I wanted you to sign it for me. And so... Most of the copies sold are sold by us. To yeah, us. I am okay with that. I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, yeah, and I, I always feel self-conscious talking about this stuff, but I am also so grateful because I am, I'm pretty overwhelmed by the amount of people that have come out yeah. and bought it and said nice things to me about it. Um, whether I, like I've never met you or it is friends, like mm-hmm. it's pretty overwhelming and not at all what I expected. Um, well, let me ask you this: your experience of having written this book, do you think that you, because in terms of the creative things, you've written shows, you've written sketches, and and written a ton of stuff for you know Funhouse, like all kinds of forms of stuff. Do you feel like? You, how is this experience of writing a book by comparison? Uh, well, this is interesting because it it is definitely a more solo experience. Mm-hmm. Like, you have people that help you with the editing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, 
really it all kind of comes down to you. Mm -hmm. um, Except for sometimes those people that along the way give you just invaluable feedback. You gave me great, a lot of great feedback. And uh, I'm not on the cover there though. There was a big rewrite that I did that you you gave me a very valuable suggestion. Which for. is something that's so like I know. I've I've worked on enough stuff to know that like writing is rewriting, mm -hmm. but man, it is it is a weird situation where like I knew how much time you put into it, and then you shared it with me, and I said, well, what about this thing and this thing and this thing, and like as I'm going through it, I'm like, this is adding up to a fair amount of stuff, and then you were like, yep, and you jumped right in, and you, I mean, I think that if you ever wanted to continue writing, which you should, obviously, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your life, but you obviously should keep writing, whether or not it's children's books or books or any form of anything. Um, you, this process, which something for me, I could see like, oh, but I just wrote it. Now you're asking me to write it again, seem, seem so frustrating. Um, I think you could easily, like, your ability to just be like, okay, and then talk through those notes and then like, be down for those notes or whatever was like super good is a great indicator Thanks. of being able to work on stuff. Well, like I think that comes from us having worked in a lot of situations where you have to go back and yeah. re uh, and address It is your choice a ton. And yeah, rework things. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess ultimately you want it to be better too. So if you just stick to your laurels and say, no, this is the way it is, mm -hmm. you are probably shortchanging yourself yeah. in the long run. Um, I didn't do everything myself, though, because I have to point out that Adam McQuaig, who you can find on Instagram, uh, he did the, I hired him to do the cover art, mm -hmm. and he just did, like, the most amazing job. Um, I don't know like, how much you want to talk about that, but I feel like that was a fun story, too. Because, like, I know, I feel like you knew, you always had, like, an idea for what you wanted. Yeah, and it was hard to materialize and, and find exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but then he just had another piece of art I saw that was exactly the vibe. Mm -hmm. And when I reached out to him, he was totally down mm -hmm. to do it. Um, and it was like a total pleasure to work with and some sent me a few other designs that it was so hard to choose because they were all really, yeah. really great. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe for the special hardcover edition, you get the extra, the other designs. Hardcover? Uh, hardcover. That, that well, I said, happening. I said that there should be a hardcover edition that has the ec other designs. An and ectoplasm. Then, like and a then, little plastic thing. There's, where there's, there's a lot of chapters, reason. and every chapter has a title. And it'd be fun to have a little short chapters. a little thing. I know, but you have a little short a, a little trying. Kids. Like, remember when the monks were bored? You ever know how <laughs> bored monks were back then? That they would they would draw, draw stuff all over their Bibles this that they were copying? This whole video is just a promotional thing for me, and I'm sweating. Oh, well, I'm, it's, I, I'm really bad about talking about the things that I work on. I mean, you shouldn't be. I think you did something really cool. Um, I'm trying to play Custom Quest, though, because so you have your achievements and I have my achievements. <laughs> okay. I thought is... this was James tonight or whatever. Well, it's tonight. I only have the best guests. Next week, we have... Um, uh, um, Groucho Marx is on the show. There's a dedication to you in the back. I know. I saw it, and it made me really emotional. So... You told me that that was because you ate some chili. Squeaky horn somewhere. Uh, the chili did not help. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just like s super grateful to everybody that has been really positive and complimentary. It's pretty over... Not what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. Except for that four-star review. <laughs> which was still pretty complimentary. Um, but... That's... I mean... That's more than I could hope for. A four-star review. You yeah. were like, yeah, I think going into it, you were like, you were like, people are going to hate it. I mean, this is how you treat everything, but you're like, people are going to hate this. But it seems like people enjoy it. I mean, I also I think as you you wrote it for a certain audience, that, and I think you nailed it. Do you feel like you could be the next R.L. Stein? My mom saw a, a comment that was like, this is the next R.L. Stein, and she, and she was so happy. Was she? I feel like she, that's the disappointing thing. I, that's what I said. <laughs> she was so happy. Uh -huh. She was so happy. Um, I well, mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I always write and I always continue to write. I don't uh -huh. know if I'll ever get to, you know, publish anything again. Any new books in the works? Uh, can you talk about those things? I know you hate to do it. <laughs> but uh, no. can you give us a little, uh, before we sign off here on Willems Tonight, um, 
Can you give us any juicy details on stories that are coming down the pipeline? Haunted houses? I mean, no, our job's dollars? pretty demanding. So, oh. I mean, this, this took me like, well, I, granted, I did stop Five a years lot later. of situations where I wasn't working on this or working on something else. But mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, maybe check me in five, five, five more years. years. Maybe a week in Halloween House? <laughs> a month in Halloween House? I said that Elise should start to get work on all the holidays. So a fortnight on Valentine's Day cruise. It's always... Oh, can you imagine being on a Halloween cruise with all the monsters? Well, I said Valentine's Day, but... And you're describing the plot of the third Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> Hotel Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do anything else. I'm just saying you take, it's in, it's a period of time and then a holiday and a location. And then you corner that market. And then you just make it a, you make it your brand. Okay, I see what you're saying. And you're known as the A blank in uh, franchise. I'm just trying to figure out a way for me to become house husband. Because ever since this book came out, I said, is this my chance to finally become house husband? Because I'll do it. Aren't you the host of a Tonight Show? Yeah, Willem's Tonight. Which I do from my home, and I am also a husband. It doesn't. It's not a limiting factor. Okay, I can have both. But anyway, at least thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you to uh, Double Fine for making Costume <laughs> Quest too. I know we barely saw any of it. Um, yeah, I feel bad that people are gonna click on this, and it's not. It's just me talking about myself. Well, I want to talk to you about your book, but yes, this stupid book. Anyway, I hate it. Thank you guys. You can find the book on Amazon. This was a promotion for Elisa's book in a lot of ways, but I also wanted to talk to her about it because she's telling me about the process and I think it's really cool and it's really fun. And I wanted to kind of share, open up some of that to you guys. Um, but yeah, thank you, Elise. I am incredibly proud of you. I think it's awesome. It's so cool feeling it and seeing it in, in person. And I'm looking forward to what you write in the future. Thanks. Maybe save a part for me. Audiobook? Any chance we get an audiobook read Maybe. by James Willems? <laughs> what? You say read by James Willems? Read by James Willems. Maybe. We'll see. That was a strike and you know it! Billy threw down his baseball mitt and kicked at the graveled ground, wishing he was standing on an actual pit. Nah, I shouldn't do it. You should get some professional. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for coming out to Willems tonight. Um, and thank you, Elise, for being a wonderful guest, as always. Hope to see you back on the show. And, um, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Oh, I thought you were trying to push me out. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Now I'm going to do the thing where I turn to her and pretend to have a conversation as we go to commercial.